So the first section is carbon neutral versus net zero carbon. Uh, let's go into that in a bit more detail. What is carbon neutral? Well, carbon neutral is all about balancing the greenhouse gas, the uh, greenhouse gas emissions, by offsetting or removing from the atmosphere an equivalent amount of these produced. Okay, so what, what does that really mean? What it really means is that we have to uh, essentially put no more carbon into the atmosphere than we're actually offsetting, than we're actually um, either sequestering, which is removing, or preventing, or indeed uh, offsetting by putting something in place which offsets the emissions that we're producing, i.e. planting trees or something of that nature. The challenge with carbon neutral, one of the issues with carbon neutral, is that we can achieve it by essentially buying credits. Um, again, we can offset by planting rainforest or, well, just forest generally. We can actually buy other people's permission to uh, produce carbon. So it, it, it allows us to basically still continue to produce carbon and still emit greenhouse gas, um, gases without necessarily reducing what we're doing. So that third bullet there, you know, it's, it's a really important element of carbon neutral is that a carbon neutral business can actually increase the emissions it produces. It doesn't necessarily mean that a business is reducing its emissions. All it means is that it's essentially moving the problem elsewhere. It's either buying someone else's permission to produce carbon, it's offsetting by planting trees or something of that nature, which is not in itself a bad thing. Um, it, you know, it's, it's good to improve the environment, but, but that is, you know, planting trees and whatever is in itself unsustainable. We, we cannot plant sufficient trees to offset all the carbon. We've actually got to reduce the amount of carbon we're producing. So I, I think it's very important to realize that carbon neutrality does not necessarily imply or even require a commitment to reduce overall heat greenhouse gas emissions. And we talk about carbon a lot, but obviously we can throw into there methane, we can throw into there the uh, the uh, fluorohydrocarbons that, that you're know, using refrigeration systems, etc. You know, generally when we speak about carbon neutral, we are talking about greenhouse gases in general, not just carbon, not just CO2. Um, but nonetheless, it, it's important to realise that this carbon neutrality is potentially a mechanism whereby large carbon producers can merely move the problem elsewhere without necessarily reducing their overall greenhouse gas emissions. And I think it's a very, very important point to be aware of. Net zero carbon is a different thing. Again, the two terms are used interchangeably or can be used interchangeably. Um, net zero carbon does require a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. And that is the big difference. Um, it's not just as simple as being carbon neutral. It's not just as simple as saying we can move the problem elsewhere. Net Net zero carbon actually, again, requires us to reduce the overall level of emissions that we're creating or putting out there. And to make this achievable or to make it something that can actually be measured um, and properly referenced, the targets are set by um, an institute called the Science-Based Target Initiative, SBTI. And I'm not going to go into all sorts of detail about who they are and where they are. The, the link to their website's there. But there's two important statements that they make, and I think these are sort of the high-level statements that people should be aware of. Um, to reach a state of net zero emissions, companies need to basically uh, apply two conditions. They've actually got to achieve a scale of value chain emission reductions. That, and this is the important point. It's reducing the overall reductions, um, which leads to a limit of warming to 1.5 degrees um, Celsius. So what we're in effect we're doing is we're, we're limiting or we're agreeing to limit the amount of greenhouse gases we're producing, which will be consistent with a, uh, a, a limit in, in temperature increase of 1.5 Celsius. And also it's to neutralize the impact of, of any residual em um, emissions that remain uh, to be eliminated by permanently removing an equivalent amount of atmospheric carbon dioxide. And that does include things like embodied carbon. So we obviously, over time, have released a great deal of carbon um, by burning fossil fuels. We are continuing to do that. We're continuing to burn fossil fuels. We need to reduce those emissions. Um, and it's not just what we're actually releasing, reducing into the atmosphere. We need to actually um, reduce what we're embodying 
in equipment or in the buildings that we produce. So when we pour concrete, we need to consider the amount of, of, of impact, the carbon impact of that concrete. Do we use regular concrete? How much of it do we use? How, how much cement do we produce or, or, or use as part of that concrete? Um, there are low carbon cements and concretes available. So should that be an option? Should that be, should, should that be something we're doing? Yes, ultimately it probably should. But let's not just think about the building. Let's think about the IT equipment that we're actually you know, manufacturing and using and hopefully disposing of in, disposing of in an appropriate manner. So we need to consider the, the embodied carbon in the manufacturer in that equipment and and not just the carbon again we're talking about greenhouse gases here generally um, as we know uh, to, to manufacture IT equipment we are producing we're using a lot of relatively difficult to obtain minerals and elements um, you know what is involved in those production methods what is involved in those extraction methods and therefore what sorts of 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 carbon impact are we having during the manufacture use and disposal so the scope three emissions that we talk about here are those that are used during construction during manufacture uh, and results in so-called embodied carbon um, it's it's all about the extraction it's all about the manufacture and it's all about the disposal at the moment we don't have a particularly good handle on scope three emissions scope one and two are basically the use phase um, it's, so it's the energy efficiency during the use phase, scope three, the embodied, so during manufacture, etc. Um, we don't have a good handle on. We're only just starting to get to that point where we're beginning to understand what's actually involved in that area.